In this video, we'll be looking to formalize the idea of a picture of a function, and we'll talk about the ideas of domain and range. So remember, we've seen an example where f of x was x squared minus 3x, and we saw how this function took values of 4, 0, and minus 2 for x values of minus 1, 0, and 1. If we were to do this many times over for a whole bunch of other x values, like these ones here on our picture, and look at the corresponding function values and how high they are, we find that we could get some sort of a picture of this function f of x equal to x squared minus 3x. We call this a graph. So let's start to formalize this idea of a picture. Sometimes we need to know when the independent or the dependent variable values are restricted in any ways. For example, if we were looking at the function f of x equal to 1 on x, we know that we can't divide by 0 because that's not defined. So we know that this function f of x has a restricted set of independent or input variable values. Similarly, if we were talking about the function f of x equals the square root of x, we know here that if we're talking about real values, we can't put negative numbers inside the square root. So here we know that x must be greater than or equal to 0 for our set of independent variable values. Well, this motivates the idea of what's formally called the domain and the range of a function. The domain is just the set of all possible values of the independent variable that are allowed according to rules of mathematics. Often that'll be just the x values that we're allowed to use. In the example above, f of x equal to 1 on x, we saw that x equals 0 was not allowed, and so the domain was x not equal to 0. The range of a function, on the other hand, is the set of all possible, possible values of the dependent variable. That's the output values, often being y or f of x. An example that we might look at here, n of r equal to r squared, so we've changed up the letters a little bit, but don't worry about that. The independent and dependent variable uh, values here are independent, r, and dependent, n. So we've just changed the letters around. Now r can be actually any value we like from the real numbers, because all we're doing is squaring it. We won't break any rules if we put any old real value we like in there. So we might say that r can be any real number n, on the other hand, the output value, or the function value, it'll never be a negative value, because we're just getting the r squareds. So if r was 0, we'd get 0. If r was any positive number, we'd get a positive value. And if r was a negative, we square that, we get a positive as well. So r can neg never be negative. So that leaves us for the domain and range. The domain will be minus infinity less than r less than infinity. In other words, any real number. And for the range, if n can never be negative, we might say that 0 is less than or equal to n of r. That's our domain and range for an example there. Why not pause for a moment now and try to have a go at these three examples yourself. So first of all, f of x equal to 3x plus 2. We can multiply any number we like by 3 and then add to two, uh, 2 to the result. So the domain is any x value we like from the real numbers, minus infinity through to infinity. Similarly, we can generate any output value we like from minus infinity to positive infinity by just varying the x value. There's no restriction at all, and we could possibly generate all of those numbers. So the range is minus infinity, less than f of x, less than infinity. Part b, f of x equals to x squared, is actually exactly the same example as this one from before. All we've done is change the letters. So we know that the domain will be minus infinity to infinity, and the range will be all positive or zero values. We can't get a negative value if we're squaring x. And finally, for f of x equals to the square root of x, the domain is zero less than or equal to x. We've done this one earlier as well. We know we can't use negative x values for the square root function. The range, then, will also be zero less than or equal to f of x. We can generate a zero if we take the square root of zero, and we can generate any positive we num number we like by just choosing the correct x value. We can never get any negative values for that function, though. So that's a few examples. What you should do now is try the worksheet problems for this video. Uh, write down in your notebook any questions you think you might need to figure out yourself later, or perhaps things that you might need to ask your teaching team. As well as that, maybe search on the internet for other people's definitions of domain and range. See if other people have explained the concept differently. 
Sometimes, if you read or see other explanations, they make more sense to you or help you to better understand the one that I've shown you here. So that goes for pretty much all of these concepts as well as we move through this course. You can look up other people's definitions and see if they make things easier to understand. But that's it now for domain and range.